uh, let's get to what you guys are all here for. Let's get to intros. First up, we have the basketball dads of all basketball dads, Dan Scott himself, Paul Johansson. Woo -woo. Hello. Hey, Paul. How's it going? How you doing there? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to talk to our fans. I'm, 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 we're all grateful. One Tree Hill has been a big part of our lives, so we love to give back as much as we can. Awesome. We love it. That's why we love the show. Okay, next up, we have Deb Lee, Barbara Allen Woods. Woo! Hey! Hi! Hey, Polly, I love that look. <laughs> Pretty well, sexy. Well, my horse is over there. He's waiting for a ride, so come on over. It's a side I've never seen of you. <laughs> it's Barry Corbin in disguise. <laughs> I love it. Okay, everyone. Next up, Chris Keller is here. Everyone, please get it up for Tyler Hilton. Woo! What up? Hi. Yes. I also think it's a sexy lip ball. I just want to wait <laughs> next. All right. <laughs> All the way from <laughs> London, Ontario. All the way from London. <laughs> It's a lot of almost Canadians. You, this is where you guys are right here in my view. Paul, Barbara. Anyway, cool. Oh, there you go. Okay, next up we have the founder of the Clean Teams group, Shelly Simon, Elizabeth Parnois. Hi, guys. There she is. Hi, hi. Is he here? Did he here? Not yet. You need to whisper her. Come on, Elizabeth. Just... Might want to hit the stop video button. We do hear you though. We're glad you're Elizabeth! here. Elizabeth, she's coming. She's coming. We'll make sure that she gets she gets on here. Let's bring in our last celebrity. Put there your hands is. together for Marcus Coloma. Marcus. Yay. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey. Yeah. Woo. Everybody's here. This is amazing. Welcome, welcome, guys. We already have fans giving all sorts of love on Facebook and. Um, Twitch and YouTube. Thank you guys so much for joining. Elizabeth, if you can hear us, um, you may need to press the stop video button in the lower left so we can see you. Kind of a cool picture of Elizabeth. That is a cool yeah, picture. Yeah. I was thinking of Can I just thing. take a screenshot of it real quick? Because I feel like <laughs> she's going to dig that. I don't know. Oh, wait, no, it didn't change. All right. Hold on. Did it change? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. shit. It moved. And I, oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Yay. It moved, and I just got a picture of Marcus. Hey, there you go. I'll send that to you. I'll send that to me. Sell it on eBay. I don't know. What you're doing. <laughs> well, guys, since um, we've go all been you guys, hello, hello. Um, so a lot of fans Thank are you. wanting to know since we are in um year twelve of quarantine. Uh, what activities or shows have you guys been binging? Because a lot of fans, particularly on purefandom.com, have been binging One Tree Hill because it's one of the best shows to binge. Have you guys been catching up? Remember, on remember when Tiger King came out? That was the beginning of quarantine. Doesn't that seem oh, forever? Yeah. <laughs> true, true. That was the beginning. That's so crazy. Uh-huh. I don't even crazy. remember that. Did you see it? It's probably the best show I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know why I was so obsessed. If you didn't it's know anything about because it. because you were in quarantine. It's only because you were in quarantine. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> now, this time was the luckiest for them. I mean, oh. you know, had it been so successful, who knows? It's crazy. Does anyone um, are anything? Supposed to, so, are you asking us about our binging shows? Yeah, binging shows. Have you picked up any hobbies during quarantine? I'm just going to finish cut people off when I talk. But um, I've, I've, been, I've been doing like an 80s binge. I've been going back to like old school 80 films that, um, that I really liked, uh, you know, that kind of inspired me to become an actor. Been on a Harrison Ford kick recently. Hey. <laughs> oh, love it. Yeah. Right. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm not sure you're cutting out a little bit. Is Elizabeth giving me the stink eye or did she, did she freeze? I think it was a freeze frame. <laughs> what uh, I did some about? other shows, though. So if you guys have some suggestions, I started watching like Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. Oh, the new one. It's yeah, it's so cool. Good. I got into the morning show on Apple TV. That was surprisingly good, I thought. So good. Was really good. And Jennifer Aniston was great. Like, holy shit. She was so mm -hmm. good. Best 
she's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so too. I was like, I don't know if she won something for that, but I was like, she should win something or I don't know. And yeah. That's what I've heard. I've heard she kills in that. Ozark mm-hmm. is cool. I've been binging that. I, I'm back. Is she back? Uh, is she back? A little bit. Okay. We can kind of hear you. Oh no. We'll make sure. We'll make sure the man, the guys behind the yeah. curtain, are taking care of that to make sure that. Make sure. So that I'll just care. I'll just weigh in on the shows. I, I haven't been very good at watching much that stuff. I've been. My son is is kind of been dictating what we watch. We've been watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos on on science. And, uh, you know, <laughs> physics and interstellar travel. And, and uh, for me, uh, uh, I've, I don't know. I think it's, it's been a lot about, um, I've been trying to be productive. So I've been working on scripts and doing research on the people I'm writing about and just kind of filling myself up with a lot of, I, don't shoot me, a lot of self-help stuff, a lot of growth, a lot of That's cool. things, things about, I think the one thing that I will say, and I, I'm sure that my, my, really sort of um, my family cast would agree is we spend a lot of time around people. So, especially in our business. So to have that really, I see the blessing to be spending time alone and get to know myself and make myself a friend again, after all these years, kind of been enjoying that process. Yeah, it definitely forces you to take a look at things and to look at life and what's important, stuff like that. Yeah. That's a blessing, I guess, out of it all. I think so. Yeah, I love it too. I feel the same way. I'm kind of like, I mean, if as long as everyone's safe, I wish they would. This would keep going for a little while. And if like money was coming in, that'd be cool, you know. Or if I just knew that it was all going to come back at some point, you know, that would be nice. But there's that fear where you're like, how long is this going on? (laughs) Or or, or will it ever be the same again? Will we go back to? Will we recognize it? Yeah. Do you remember when we left you guys to One Tree Hill? Back in the 19, sorry, 2003. Um, when we left, you used to go to auditions and audition in front of producers and directors and they would give you direction and you would have an interplay and it would be, there would be some sort of, you know, you'd get to know them, they get to know you and then they'd hire you based not just on your performance, but on sort of an, a feeling they had about you. And then when we came back, I never met hardly any casting directors. It's all self-home tapes and all this yeah. other stuff. It was already beginning to go where we are now. Well, yeah, that's the thing the Canadian so range oh, doing an audition at your house because you got to like run around and do things, but it's just you and a cell phone in a room. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's a strange time. And now, and now they have Zoom for everybody who's listening here. You test for a TV show, um, you test for it, and um, usually they have mix and matches where you read with other actors. And now they have the reading with other actors on a zoom call just like this like right now i don't even know where i'm looking i'm looking at you paul like i'm trying oh to talk all I'm, I'm looking at me too paul's having a great chemistry read with himself actually <laughs> the fact that you have to just show chemistry in a situation like this is practically impossible that's, that's a great point yeah. elizabeth what do you think um, I agree. <laughs> I'm having a hard time getting my chemistry in on this conversation. Right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're very clear right now. It's like the best it's yeah. been. This is okay, good. True. So I took off my earbuds. I tried to uncomplicate things. I Way better. I turned off my okay. cellular. Only my wife. I did all sorts of things. Because it kept me shooting. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I may have. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was say, what are you binging, Elizabeth? Because I need more ideas. And we're I just binged, and I know I'm super late to the party for all of you Canadians and living in Canada. Schitt's Creek. I just binged the crap out of Schitt's Creek. And okay, I haven't set. tried that. Is it? That, oh, that says it's so, great. so it's good. Nice. It's like like a socially conscious, amazing comedy with one of my, you know, Catherine O'Hara is like one of my favorite people of all time as a oh, comedian. Um, it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Check it out if you want to laugh and you like it's both comedy and uh, very real heartfelt moments and very topical stuff and um but also like I don't know it just it makes you happy. Right now it's very it's a good show to watch. Okay. 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 It makes you happy. Uh, I watch I have to throw, the, the, I have I have a shameless plug. Okay. Uh, your internet connection is Uh-oh. 
<laughs> oh, oh no. you said your internet connection that was amazing I know it's like a setup. Yeah. Are you ready? Can you hear me? Can you see? Yeah, you're good. You're back. Okay, good. Um, Netflix, um, Daybreak. That's what I've been watching. What is that? Has anyone seen it? What is it, Tyler? What? No idea. I haven't okay. seen it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for what the support. Anyway, my daughter's in it, so I had to throw that in there because if oh. she's watching it, like, why did you mention Daybreak? But also very topical for what's going on right now. And your daughters are so talented. All of them are so wonderful. Thank you. What a blessing. Paul. Yeah. And like ever, like you guys were all saying, I've really enjoyed this time because we've all been in the same house for such a long, like longer than we ever have been. So we've just been enjoying, you know, doing puzzles and making dinners together and eating at the dining room table. We've never, ever oh. done that. So <laughs> life is pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of family time happening now. Forced family time, I feel like. Yeah. Like we're with my mother-in-law, but it's been nice because we have a six-month-old, so it's really oh, good. Oh, yeah. Good. All right, I'll so show you a good. picture. Fine. Yeah, I was going to say. All right. All right, I'll look for one as we're talking. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm at home with my two-and-a-half-year-old and my one-year-old, and it's very stressful, but also I know I'll never have that again. So it's been, yeah. you know, really Perfect. nice. My yeah, sister has a two-year-old that says it's been so tough being at home with her hey. while she's just in this age and can't go anywhere. And very just... The nice weather helps. Get outside and run around and get yeah. the energy out. Elizabeth, I just saw uh, Chaos Theory, which I thought was really good. Oh, cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I in a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That one was shot in Vancouver. Oh, nice. That makes sense. Yeah. Is okay, anyone tonight? I'm going to IMDb all wow. the oh, <laughs> Yeah, he's beautiful. Oh, he looks just cool. like Chad. Yeah, it's a girl. It's little Winnie. Oh, 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 oh. oh so sweet. So cute. Oh, beautiful, cute. beautiful child. Wow. God bless her. <sighs> She's a cutie. What's her name? Winnie. Winnie. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I love that name. Yeah, Winnie. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna make Tyler the host and you're just gonna do a, a screen right? share the rest of the time of photos of Winnie. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That was well, that, that your only child? Yeah, yeah. So you're it's you, crazy you, we, yeah. yeah. We planned on right. like taking this year off anyway just to do the baby thing. And wow. she was like, late December. Perfect. I know, and then the world shut down and we were like, okay. <laughs> I know. I was happy that the world shut down because um, I have oh. to have foot surgery. <laughs> so you had what surgery? I, I'm about to go and have it, and it's going to take maybe like up to six months. What to are they? What are you having wow. surgery? I'm having a surgery on uh, bunions. Hey! hey. Oh my god! Bunions! <laughs> bunions. <laughs> bunions. <laughs> <laughs> Six if months, I had to huh? guess, that, would, that wouldn't no, have been my guess. I don't know. That's what they told me. I don't know. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but they said it can take up to six months because I have a lot of it going on. It's not ugly. It's just painful. So they're like, wow. it's probably bone and bone. I don't want to talk about this. Anyway. <laughs> wait, 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 I have questions. I have questions. I think we all have questions, actually. In the good time, that's a perfect segue for a fan question. Um, <laughs> Bethany Romano, she says, Hi, everyone. Love you all so much. One Tree Hill has been a big part of my life. The show helped me get through some dark times in my life. So I thank you all for helping me see the light in life. What was everyone's favorite part of being on the show or favorite moment or uh, storyline? Uh, we'll start with the ladies. Barbara, would you like to? Sure. Yeah. I mean... Paul must get tired of this answer, but it's never going to change. So my favorite season storyline was um, the love-hate relationship that Dan and Deb had and all the tricks we played on each other. And I mean, there were some scenes that we shot that never even made it to the show. I think they exist on some sort of hidden footage, something somewhere. Um, do you remember, Paul, the storyline we had where I gave you, um, what was it? Was some sort of STD or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not Barbara, but Deb. 
right? Oh, no, like, okay, that changes it. Yeah, yeah. Li- no, it wasn't lice. It was like some kind of something. Like I don't know even know what it was. But anyway, I think this CW or W, it, huh? whatever it was at the time, said no. That's like that's too extreme. So I think that they never even aired it. But all the jokes that we played on each other with the like taser and the ear to the phone, the glue on the ear to the phone, and all of that stuff was the so much fun. It was like yeah. the what? The toothbrush. The toothbrush, yes. Oh, the toothbrush, yes. Um, the comedy amongst all the drama was just like, hey, we're having fun. You guys are crying, but we're having fun. It was the best year. Well, that's awesome. Elizabeth, what about you? Um, my fondest memories are both off camera and on. Like, I had such a great time working with, you know, the cast in general, but one particular memory that I love is all, all of all of us were at, not all of us, but um, like, uh, you know, the teen cast, even though we were all like 30. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we were at Hillary's house and there was a sort of like mild hurricane storm. And we decided to like go out into the storm and like join hands and dance in a circle in the rain. And we all got sopping wet. And it was just like silly, silly fun. It's like we had so much fun working together, but then we became very close friends. My favorite maybe moment shooting the show was when we shot our our uh, Spice Girls number. Cause we were all like, we were kind of partying anyway. We were just having a great time shooting this party scene. And then, you know, we got to do this ridiculous dance number. It was just really fun. <laughs> Choreography, it was very fun. <laughs> I love it. What about you, Tyler? Yeah, I forgot about the hurricanes. All the hurricanes we had down there together were so fun. <laughs> really no i mean they were they were scary but i'd never been through them and we would all end up at someone's house i think like in 2004 or 5 we all and a lot of us ended up at chad's house and we watched the entirety of lost i think over like two weeks or something all my yeah. favorite episodes were the ones paul directed i always tell him that <laughs> i thought paul was my favorite director i loved oh. working with him i true i truly i like it was so fun always like the most fun spontaneous stuff happened and you direct oh, like a non-director you which I feel like people who play instruments, I love to hear people play instruments as if they don't play that instrument professionally. You know, I, there's a certain kind of like, I don't know, you know, like rebelliousness. If it, you're, if you don't feel like you're taking it seriously and Paul's a great director, but he doesn't act like a director at all. And there's just something about that. That's cool. I don't know. I, I always like that. Yeah. Oh, I told- kind of, that's a great True. compliment. Yeah. Paul, uh, what about you? I think Marcus needs to go first and then me. Okay, fair enough. I'll go. Uh, you know, for me, I think my favorite thing about it was it's it, just coming from LA. I come from a town that's very similar to where One Tree Hill shoots, and I think just just going to that environment with all the trees and, and getting out, and it's such a cute little place that um, I would I would have never gone to that place in a million years had it not been for the show. And uh, and I think the favorite part of shooting it was just kind of they're they're like James is somebody that I, I was randomly in an acting class with uh, years earlier. And so it was, it was just kind of fun to meet up with them and, um, and kind of reconnect with uh, some, a couple of people like Brett and, um, and James, uh, you know, that's always fun. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, I think for me, it's, 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 it's kind of bittersweet. You know, we uh, we left all of our friends and family for nine years to go to Wilmington, which was a beautiful place. And there are beautiful people there. Um, and I made a lot of great friendships. But, you know, <clears throat> what I remember most about it and what I reflect on the most is it kind of touches what Tyler's talking about. It's the moments in between the lines that were f- really sort of exciting where we would make more of a script than was on the page. And we had good writers, so I'm, this is no nothing about them. It's just for us as actors, you know, we can memorize the line, show up and do our job and go home. And, you know, and it can just be, you know, very automatonic. But when you find magic, um, because we give each other the freedom or we challenge each other, we tend to do that a lot. And that cast, um, which was, you know, largely unregulated by the adults in charge, we did find great moments. Um, and we were encouraged to. They weren't, you know, they weren't they were good producers. I don't mean it like that. What I mean is that we, we weren't really pushed that hard. We were, we pushed each other, you know, and I love that. Like with Barbara and our scenes, you know, we found magic that 
wasn't on the page. We're allowed to explore it. And for sure, Tyler and I just, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what kind of a show we were shooting when we were shooting together because we couldn't keep a straight face. But it, I mean, <laughs> I just love the magic in between the writing that we were able to find that I remember um, countless, countless examples of that just made it um, an artistic experience on a show that could have been a little bit uh, pedantic in its service. So. Well, it showed up. Really pretty. good actors on the show too. I mean, like, I feel like we've done other shows, a lot of us, and they're kind of populated by just randos. I don't know. And on One Tree Hill, I feel like everyone was just like a heavy hitter, like great actors, I thought, you know, like mm. even all the pretty faces, you know, they're not yeah. supposed to be good actors. Everyone's a good actor oh, thank on you. the show. What? You're thank right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I was looking right at you, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's crazy. A single person who wasn't pretty on that show. <laughs> Everybody was pretty, so I hope one of us was talented. <laughs> you know, the first day I walked on the set, I was like, Jesus Christ. This is like the best looking people in the entire world. It's like, God. I'm like a One Tree Hill 5, you know? I walked on the set. Yeah, one Tree Hill 5. <laughs> oh, I feel That's funny. <laughs> Well, as a big fan, um, personally, I think it's one of those teen soaps that just like set the bar. It, I loved it. Love it still. The final season, I think, is like my favorite. It was just absolute absurdity, and I was obsessed. <laughs> um, Paul, I would love to know what you thought when you saw what Dan Scott was gonna what was gonna happen that season. Were you like, yes, let's do this? Um, I had a good talk before the final season with the producers and had a, they gave me a strong sense of the direction. Um, I didn't, I didn't really understand the, uh, where we were going to go. What I really liked was that they sent my character off in the penultimate episode instead of the final one, which gave me sort of my own exit rather than the whole show. I went out with everybody else. I got to go out one episode early, which sort of gave a really nice button for Dan's character. And I thought it was a clever way to do it. Um, um, I will say that um, I think I've said this before that the episode and the day that I shot my own death was the same day that my mother died in real life. Oh. So it's tied together with a lot for me. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's a karma or some sort of cosmetic energy in the universe, but um, that doesn't feel random to me. Wow. Oh my wow. goodness. I didn't realize. Dang. I, I don't really mean to put a downer on this. I mean, no, <laughs> still, no. it's still, you're allowed to make jokes about it. It's okay. Well, it's almost, it's almost uh, like you said, a cosmic in a way of a, yeah. a, you know, an ending of many things, many, many important things. Thank you. For yeah. The, the, it's funny you said that about the last season. Cause the producer did the same thing with me. He was like, you know, uh, just read the first page of the first episode. And if you don't want to come back after reading that, then I understand. And the very first page, was like Dan Scott and Chris Keller sitting in a car holding a gun. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, what? Like, I was like, I'm so into this. I don't know where this is going, but I'm so in. It's funny. That was so fun. Yeah. It was the best. Um, we have some fans asking um, what Meg Bonnie would like to know. What is each of your favorite musical moments on the show? We'll start oh. with the ladies again. Tyler Hilton, Darcy, Tyler. I already gave right. you mine. <laughs> Oh, you did? Yeah, Spice Girls. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that still rings, oh, Barbara. No, anything Tyler. Anything <laughs> Tyler. All Tyler. Say, uh, right. when Kate Kate appeared. We want more Tyler. Yeah, That's it. Tyler. I'm serious. More Tyler. For me, it was Fall Out Boy Music. watching them perform. And... Oh, yeah. I feel like shows don't do that anymore. Yeah. Know. You know what? I probably when we were all singing like along with Gavin DeGraw in the last episode, that was fun. Gavin mm -hmm. came and sang the theme song and we're all in the crowd being buddies. And yeah. it was cute. It was, you know, we didn't mean to, I feel like a lot of us didn't mean to get emotional because we're like, ah, it's just a show. We're all going to keep in touch, but we're all like, you know, a little right. bit eerie through it. Hey, am, is, am I making this up that One Tree Hill was really the first show that had super cool music that you're almost watching the show as much for the storyline as much for the music as the storyline it wasn't that one of the first major shows that did that am it i crazy like i think so yeah no, I, think you're right. I hear that yeah. a lot but i don't think there was another because i was trying to think if like there was like the uh on um what's the show uh, uh melrose place wasn't there like the peach pit or something like that they kind of had yeah. like uh, every now but they didn't make it a centerpiece the way they didn't make it like a thing yeah, yeah. yeah. Same with Buffy. They had the bra Buffy the Vampire Slayer had the bronze, but it was never like 
One Tree Hill. I mean, people would watch this show, you know, for that reason, you know, and and artists wanted to be on the show for that reason. Yeah. You know, um, I feel like it was the first show that really did that. I don't know. Mm hmm. I, I love the way they would pick out like the, that one song for the coda and whatever like the speech was at the end, that fucking got me every single time. Every time. Every it was time. Like the words and the music they would pick out and the it just was like, I don't know. So, man. I think that's ugh, wow. That was that was always my favorite part. Yeah. A lot of synergy with the within the story and the music. Yeah. Was there a show, was there a song that you would have liked to have seen, especially for like early 2000s time period that you would have liked to have either sang any of you on the show or would have liked to have seen performed on this, on the show? And I, I have to add when, when it comes to music, I have to add this highlight for me when Huey Lewis was on the show. Oh yes. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, he's my, he's my generation, you know? So absolutely. I had scenes with him. Good. I I was so excited and we became kind of close during that time. I mean, we really connected and we talked about kids and life and, um, you know, there was a lot of downtime in between scenes and it was the two of us talking, but I couldn't look at him without in the back of my mind. I just kept repeating, this is Huey Lewis. I'm talking to Huey Lewis. Oh my God, it's Huey Lewis. It's Huey Lewis. It's Huey Lewis. <laughs> he was the nicest. Sweet. I mean, I think he's still in my phone. Hugh under L. Huey Lewis. Like he's just the coolest guy. Definitely a highlight of my life. That's awesome. You know, it's a random Huey Lewis story. I totally forgot about this. So you said this, but my uncle has played in a band in LA forever at the uh, Sagebrush Cantina out in Calabasas, and my aunt used to work there. And Huey Lewis came in all the time, like in the '90s or the '80s or something. He became obsessed with my aunt and was trying to date her forever and used to send her 12 dozen roses every Tuesday to her wow. house. And she just said, no, no, no. And she was like really into my uncle who was in the, the bar band. And so anyway, they started dating and he wrote her this song called Roses Every Tuesday. It's one of my favorite songs he's ever written. And it's literally about her picking him over this like huge star that would come into the sagebrush all the time. Uh -huh. just, like, guitar play. Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. That sounds like a One Tree Hill storyline. Yeah. I love it. Uh, we have some more fan questions coming in. Um, and remember, fans, you guys, um, even if you're watching this as a recording, the paid exclusive experiences, including those one-on-one -on -one, um, private chats, custom messages, and autographs are available at wizardworldvirtual.com. So don't forget to check those out. Uh, Romy Myers says, um, I'm from South Africa. One Tree Hill got me through quarantine. I love how close everyone is. Do you think there could ever be a reunion episode? Yeah. Why, why just a reunion? Why don't we do a whole series? Why don't we revisit this and, you know, maybe the, the seven of us, six of us here should get together and talk about, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, would. The whole show. I don't know. I've heard okay. things. One I always hear yeah. things, but I've been hearing things. Paul, you'd have to come back as a ghost. <laughs> or something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah oh, it's an, it's I always thought it'd be interesting to try to do, um, um, and this would kill us, or unless they did flashbacks, but to do a prequel to go and do like the Dan, Deb, Karen in high school storyline with younger versions and then maybe sort of like play that out, you know, from the eighties. That's cool. That's really cool. And yeah. set it in the eighties. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. My that, own. That's very hot right now that going back to the eighties and now yeah. it's kind of eighties too, <laughs> making me feel very old, but yeah. 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 Or, or feature or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So that's a yes, Romy. <laughs> Romy. There you go. Um, we have a couple more fan questions here. Uh, hey, I have a question first. I want to know, Tyler, yeah. are you putting out any new music these days? What are you doing? Oh, Paul, you're sweet. Um, no, nothing new. I, I put out a, a like a song like a month ago. Did a music video. Where can we get it? It's on uh, Spotify and on YouTube. Okay. I did a music video with all of Megan and I's wedding footage from like five years ago. Oh, and like Hillary's in it and Lee's in it. And it's like, it's a cute little thing, but yeah. What is the song what? called? It's yeah, what's the song I called? I See You, I See Home. Uh, oh. but yeah, it's on, you know, Spotify or YouTube or, you know, my oh, Instagram. Check it out, YouTube. 
I wrote a little ditty called COVID. Oh, can we hear it? <laughs> yeah, go somewhere. Let me get my guitar. <laughs> Are you going to do it? <laughs> no, yeah, no. My son's in there. I'm not going to get him. That'll be part of the reunion special. Yeah. Yeah, right. Go Everyone ahead. will have a set. <laughs> Goodbye, COVID, it's called. See ya. I already well, this went on for like 10 more years, but like we obviously didn't know it now. So we're OK taking it in chunks like, oh, this will be done in the fall. Oh, this will be oh done. You know, God. what if this goes on for like it's not right. I don't know. That's a scary thing. I, nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's going to disappear. I just think that there's going to be ways to better control it, just like the flu. I think that we'll get to that point for sure. Just. You know, I, I'm no. not I'm not confident right now because until we get some proper leadership, I don't see anything happening positive. We need uh, right. We need yeah. intelligent leadership. Well, yeah, I'm planning really for do. forever and hoping for like next month, but crazy. I mean, and I don't even know a precedent. To, I don't even know what to look back on and be like, oh, here's what they did. Then I don't, it's just like crazy. Well, I, I feel bad for the kids. Like I, you know, my little dude who's coming right now to talk to me. Yeah, is uh, he doesn't get come here, come here. Doesn't even get played. Take your headphones off for a second. <laughs> is he going to go? Hold on. He, Put this in your ear. In fall, right? Sit on my lap. Hold on. Put this in your ear. He just asked if, would you, you know if you're going to school in the fall or not. Dad, let me tell you this. Oh, sorry. I need <laughs> to tell you. So okay. we need a I, I'm up. Go ahead. 50 megaton resistant asteroid bunker by 2028. <laughs> we need a 50 because megaton resistant why, asteroid <laughs> bunker by 2028. Because well, we better get started. Do you have a shovel? Large asteroid will be coming so close to earth that you can see it with normal binoculars. Oh. did you just learn this on the internet mm -hmm. okay well we better get ready so do you have a helmet you want to put on <laughs> oh boy <laughs> okay he's gonna think about this asteroid so i just want everybody to know that there's a 50 megaton asteroid coming towards earth Is that you heard it wow we heard it there first okay just gonna give us a quick Google while we're talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna look this up. The asteroid. <laughs> then a 20-story building wider than 100 feet. Taller than a 20-story building wider than 100 feet. So that's the asteroid. I gotta take my hat off because I'm scared. Yeah. Uh, I love how he just mic dropped. Like he was like, "That's it." <laughs> Talk about it, guys. <laughs> okay, so. So now we know what um, Paul. We know what you're going to be doing for the next for the next Sweet year. And what Sweet I'm, I'm on the phone, phone, honey. Wait, can I go in here? Wait, okay. So he's right. Yeah. An asteroid is likely to pass within thirty thousand miles of Earth in 2028, and there is a possibility that it would hit Earth. The International Astronomical Agency that tallies the orbits of asteroids announces yesterday. Oh, at least we have 2028. Oh, I, I thought it was happening this afternoon. <laughs> We have eight okay. years. I have a ring pop. Years. So there's still time um, for the reunion. Good. Yeah, That's all that matters. We can yeah. love it. Okay. Um, well, before we wrap up, I want to make sure we we want to know what where we can find you guys with any new projects, any new music, um, behind the scenes work that you're doing. Um, uh, let's start with the ladies again. Well, I'll start with the ladies. Oh, my internet connection is, is unstable again. So wait, start with Elizabeth. Okay. My Connection is wonky. Go ahead. My focus is the however long it's going to take to heal my foot. But I am working on a production. I'm developing a movie right now, and um, with a friend, and that's kind of been put on hold a bit by this whole COVID thing. But we're still working on the creative side of it, and. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, it's kind of one day at a time at this point. <laughs> With the way things are constantly changing, it's really hard to plan. Right. But um, doing a lot of, you know, doing what I can in charitable, in a charitable way. Um, I want to encourage people uh, to uh, keep immune suppressed people in mind as much as the elderly and everyone. Um, that lupus has affected my family greatly, and, and people with lupus have um, very, suppressed immune systems and they're therefore much more susceptible obviously to what's going on right now so um if anyone's interested in being a part of helping those people or anyone out there watching this who has lupus um go to the lupus foundation of america if you want to contribute in any way um so i've been focusing a lot on that you know helping in that way that's wonderful thank you for sharing mm -hmm. uh barbara uh, um 
So uh, things that are coming up, I'm developing a show with my 13 year old daughter, soon to be 13, she's still 12. Wow. Um, it's been pretty exciting and things are actually happening with it. So it's pretty crazy. Um, and it, it's interesting, like somebody else said, it's, it's, it's something I probably wouldn't have done if it hadn't been for this time off, um, but we've been focusing on it and it's actually going somewhere and it's just been really exciting. So that's our, been our silver lining throughout all of this. Um, my daughter, Emily, is going to be going to New York to shoot the new Gossip Girl. And she's one of the stars of that. So and that's on okay. HBO Max, so be watching for that. And my okay. other daughter, Natalie, is going to be um, doing a David Kelly show called The Big Sky. And that's going to be um, shooting in Vancouver. So wow. that's kind of like what our whole family's doing right now. That's Wait, awesome. is she Natalie Woods? Yeah, well, she's Natalie Lind. Oh, I was like, whoa. Yeah, I know. It was, she wanted to change her name when she was 10 years old. She said, I'm changing my name to Natalie Woods. But that didn't go over with the hubby. So it's Natalie that's Lind. Funny. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> was she a fan of Natalie Wood or was no. She loves Natalie Wood, yeah. Interesting. That's not, no, that's not oh, what we Robert need. Got her. it. Sorry. My yeah. Bad. I'm yeah. <laughs> I love all this fierce female energy. By the way, yeah. where did that whole Natalie Woods thing going? Like, is this guy going to, what's his name? The husband? Like, it kind of was Robert bubbling Wagner. and it went away. What? Robert Wagner. What's going on with him? Are they going to, like, arrest him? Well, Christopher, like, Christopher Walken was on the boat, too. I know. Oh. I, like, read, all, I got so into it for a second. Wait, what happened? Oh. What happened with Nat? What? There's all this weird Christopher Walken. Paul knows. Paul knows I can yes. tell him I'm going to call you later. Yeah, I have to tell you later. <laughs> so, can that be a part of the reunion special? Oh. No, I'm kidding. Okay, now Marcus, Marcus, what about you? Well, so, uh, you know, I'm currently on General Hospital, which is shut down. Um, but so it's funny, I'm doing things like uh, I auditioned for Captain Crunch today. I can't tell you what the commercial is about fully, but uh, I'd be a dad. So it's going to be a pretty wild thing if I get that. Um, <laughs> Honestly, not much because it's and even it's really funny because even if you book something right now, who knows if it's actually going to shoot, you know, but uh, I guess well, I guess General Hospital would probably be the biggest thing that's going on that you could catch on Hulu. Um, and then we were supposed to start shooting again in July, but uh, that got shut down. So we'll see. See, thank you. Tyler, what about you? Oh, uh well, you got the babe. You're I got the baby. Yeah. Yep. Here I was listening to everyone's answer. I didn't prepare anything. You know, a bunch of random stuff, like, you know, recording, writing. Like, I, I was producing Billy Ray Cyrus's new record before this whole thing shut down. We're still kind of doing it like long distance, but he's on a farm right now and I'm up here. So, you know, we'll do like one song a month, you know, but we're just, you know, I'm writing a bunch and doing baby stuff, you know, so that's pretty much it. Enjoy it while they're little. It goes yeah. by way too fast. I know it's been fun. It's been really fun. Good. Paul, what about you? Oh, well, I was supposed to leave in 10 days to start prep on a movie in Budapest. Uh, with a lovely cast with uh, Lawrence Fishburne and Thomas Jane and Terrence Stamp, uh, a really cool sort of um, Dan Brown type movie uh, um, about the Vatican and exorcisms. And it was really cool. But um, the actors uh, rightfully decided that uh, even though there's not a lot of COVID incidences in in Western Europe right now, border in Eastern Europe, it's safest for us all to just wait and see what happens. So we push that. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get that up and going again in October. That's the plan. But um, in the last four months, uh, I wrote a, I got hired to write a script about the last um, few years of Ernest Hemingway's life, which I'm really proud of that. Um, cool. And then, um, and I just awesome. got hired to write, to write a script called Tear Down This Wall about a music promoter and an American music promoter who went to West Berlin, West Germany during the um, Cold War and decided to put together the most awesome concert ever right on the Berlin Wall so that he could basically fuck with these Germans and the Russians. And it eventually was the impetus for getting that wall torn down. So it's a big music movie with all these cool bands and these cool stories called Tear Down the Wall. So I'm writing that right now with Nick Cassavetti, my partner. So oh, that's cool. That sounds amazing. That is awesome. Uh -huh. And you know what's crazy about that movie going? So Megan's directing a movie. It was supposed to go in March, and then it got pushed to supposed to start this week. It got pushed two more weeks or whatever. So August 3rd is supposed to start in L.A. Anyway, all the COVID shit is set up for it. And I don't know if it's going to get pushed again, probably. 
but there's a COVID officer has to be on set. They have to stick that shit up your nose every day. If you're oh in, have God. you heard about this? There's like a group, B oh. group, C group. Yeah, yeah. They're like a group is the director and the actors. Yep. Yep. Hair and makeup are the only people that can go between B group and A group. But every day they have to get tested. Yeah. And, then, and the people that are living with the actors and A group like me yep. have to get tested like once a week or something. It's just yeah. crazy. Wow. I can't believe that it. Is- Wow. So weird. It's Actors a wild. Are, they're doing their own touch-ups. You know, it's just like crazy. I, like, I, I, I can't even believe it. Wow. Well, I will say, um, and we're getting, we get this feedback um, on these chats and on social as well. Having you guys here with this panel and hearing, um, you know, just everyone being really transparent and honest about how they're dealing and still trying to create opportunities for themselves and allowing yourself to maybe work on that project or not work on that project just because you're overwhelmed. It's been, um, it's been really, really helpful to us, the fans. And it's just, it's been really, really nice to see. We genuinely appreciate you doing this. And it's this been, is the only uh, thing in the entire world right that I can remember that we've all gone through at the same time, the entire right. world, the not America, world. not North America, every single person mm-hmm. in South Africa, in France, it's just crazy. Like we're all being like, what? I, I, when did that happen last? Not even a world war. It only affects certain countries, you know, this yeah, is like yeah, everywhere. True. Crazy. Very crazy. true. I think the only other common denominator between people was across the world with, with kids, but not everyone has kids, you know? So now it's just everyone, these are in terms of shared experiences. So I think, um, again, this has just been a wonderful bright spot. Thank you all so much for joining. This has been great. Let's give virtual virtual class fans for everybody. Um, we hate to see you go, but uh, feel free to go ahead and um, sign off and end uh, end the meeting. Let's give everyone a big more round of applause. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. Barbara Woods, Thanks, Tyler guys. Hill, and Marcus Bye. Uh, oh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. You guys have been great. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.